I welcome you all into another wonderful time at the presence of the Lord. This is a program you all know impacts. It's about the spiritual growth and leadership. And I pray that God in his infinite mercy continue to be teaching us to be putting us through so that we can be able to grow leaders raise leaders that will impact generations in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen My name is Dr. Gilbert First Chasing and this is a program impact that always come every Tuesday 6 p.m. And it's a leadership program that will be changing lives and I'll be molding lives. Once again, Christ, the great teacher, will teach us more in the name of Jesus Christ. For today, I want to diagnose, teach, dissect on leaders that made impacts, great impacts in the ministries. God has blessed this world with leaders impactful leaders and transforming leaders that have built great ministries. Yet, most of them started small but their motive was right and their relationship with God was strong. And because of this, they were able to do things right and put people through and make impacts. They were able to do things that expand the frontiers of God's kingdom. Their motives were not money. Their motives were not fame. Their motives were not gain and profit. But spiritual impacts. We need to discuss this. Because outside now, out there, you have a lot of ministers of God, in quotes, that comes out with very, very different motives. The motive for some people, fame, some money, some profit, and some spiritual impact. But by the time we go through all these people, We'll be able to learn one or two things from them. But adventure, we we'll go back to our ministry and restructure things. Let's all of all read Romans chapter 15, verse number 4. Romans chapter 15, verse number 4. For whatsoever things were written before, were written for our learning, that we, through the patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. So these examples that we are going to give today are for learning and to give us hope in addition to what we've already known in the scripture. Let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. Um, okay. Let's all go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Then we'll read verses 10 and 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. No complaints, as some of them also complain, and were destroyed by destroyer. Now, all these things happen to them as examples. And as they were written for our admiration, Upon whom the ends of the ages have come. 
as examples. So there are examples of great and impactful leaders and ministries. So we can learn a lot by checking up, up this example of leaders who have done great work for the Lord. Let me tell you something. They made impacts with their personal ministry. They make impacts with their corporate gift for the Lord. Number one, John Wesley. John Wesley. This great man started as an itinerant preacher with market evangelism. And through that, he founded Methodist Church that is still operating till today Blessing souls all over the world. He had died, but the Methodist church is flourishing till today. He had a recorded sermon. He had a recorded sermon of over four, He had over forty thousand recorded sermon. There are still reference points for many preachers up to today. You can imagine a man that started with market evangelism. Now a bigger Methodist church. Right. Made great impact. John Wesley. Another man. His blood brother, Charles Wesley. This man penned, he wrote down more than 6,000 songs and hymns that are still directing the art of people towards God and saving souls today. All those hymns the Methodist Church, Anglican Church, uh, Baptist Church, in fact, in all churches of the world, you, there is no church you get to that you not get the one of the hymns composed by Charles Wesley. Look at these Christmas songs. Charles Wesley. And the Lord. Till today, he died centuries ago. But his work is still impacting life till today. Let's go on. Fanny J. Crosby. Fanny J. Crosby. This man got blind at the age of six. Despite being blind, he wrote more than 5,000 songs that are still strong and blessing souls and drawing people to heaven till today. Despite being a blind man. Despite being a blind man. Hmm. Now you will tell me. What is blocking you from doing the right thing for the Lord? Another one. D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody won many souls to the Lord. Despite his poor education background. Not go to school like that. But he won many souls to God. He wrote books despite his poor education background. He even set up Moody Bible School Institute that has trained and raised many quality ministers of God despite his poor education background. Now, what is your excuse? You are not a graduate. Is that your excuse? This is another man for you. Doctrine of justification by faith to the church. He started the mass printing of the Bible. And he wrote books that liberated millions from Catholic darkness. His church is still around. If not for God and the, the anointing of Martin Luther, nobody would have been able to be reading Bible. At that moment, it was only Pope that had one big Bible. But through the ministry of this man, Martin Luther, Bible could get to every corner of the world. 
doctrinal error in Catholic then was corrected by Martin Luther. For the one that told them that it has to be justification by faith, not justification by indulgence. At that time, you want to commit offense, you want to go into adultery tomorrow, you can come to church, to Pope today, and pay for it. And so far you've paid for it, they will say you are qualified to go for adultery tomorrow. Justification by indulgence. So Martin Luther that came up, and no! Let's go and look into that big Bible. God cannot support that. After several efforts, change the mindset of people that it can never be justification by indulgence, but by faith. This ministry liberated the world. The anointing that will make your ministry change the world will fall on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Francis of Assisi. This man fasted and prayed until, until the old city of Florence became saved and he started a movement that outlasted him for more than 100 years. He fasted and prayed for the whole city. Charles Spurgeon. This man preached to more than 5,000 in London. He wrote books, commentaries, and his material is still blessing millions of people till today. Charles G. Finney. He conducted many revivals that saved hundreds of thousands. He wrote books that spread the revival and converts until today these people are still with the Lord. You remember Mother Teresa? She was an icon of poor. She was an icon of care for the poor, for the destitute, for the downtrodden. He lived in poor places to identify with her converts and use the means of care and welfare to bring many to Christ. And that's all he did to bring people to Christ. Even up to today, I work still lived. Still lived. Bill Bright. Bill Bright. He started the ministry at the age of, at the age of 31 and died at the age of 81. He wrote 100 books. And this man was the one that did Jesus film. Jesus film that has been in circulation and had been watched by over 3, mil, 3 billion people. This man, Bill Bright, was the one that did Jesus film. And he started his ministry at the age of 31. And he has his team in over 250 countries with over 30,000 stars. And he handed over to godly successor that still continue to grow and expand the ministry. Till today, Bill Bright. So if you see any film anywhere, Jesus film, he was the man that did it centuries ago. Died, but the work still goes on. Tell me, what will you do? What are you doing? Spread the gospel. Fighting in the church, fighting your pastor, fighting the women pastor, fighting the leader, instigating people against themselves. That one will take you to heaven. But where will you say when these people stayed on the judgment day and you are there? And these people they are reading the profile of these people. What would they read about you? Are you going to stay in the same room on the judgment day with these people? Am I? You see, what would they read? What would be in my profile? What would be your profile on the day of judgment? A man at the age of 31 that came up with a project for the Lord. They came up with Jesus' film. And they are still watching it today. Though he died over 100 years ago. He spent just 51 years, 50 years in ministry. And he changed the world. Bill Bright. Let's go on. W.C. Moore. He started a publishing ministry with his wife. With his wife. And uh, 
He started a magazine called Herald of His Coming. And uh, after his death, paper is still going strong and bring revival to the hearts of people, to churches, and to nations. Joseph Ayo Babalola. He prayed much. He, he spied the revival, he spied the fire of revival that brought multiple thousands to the Lord. God used him mightily to put down the power of darkness in southwest Nigeria. His work is still growing strong more than 60 years after his death. Reverend S. B. J. Oshofa. This man, despite his poor educational background, was given the church a kind of worship that had never been given to humankind before. Despite his poor educational background, he received everything in total and established it. That you must be only for you to be with the Lord. God told him that many people go to church. They did a lot of things in the church. And when they died, they could not enter my kingdom. Because as they go to church, they still go to idols. Abalists. I'm giving you this church. So that they can be worshipping in this church. And they must not, they will not be able to go to Abalis. What they go to Abalis, they look for again. They will see it in this church. So that by the time they die, they can through this church, through worship, enter my kingdom. And he accepted it. He practiced it. He established it. And he taught it. And the man died years ago. And the church is still flourishing. I want so many souls. Change so many lives. Destabilize the kingdom of darkness. Bring people from occultic, change them, preach to them, baptize them, turn them to man, men and women of God. Till today, what will be written in your profile? Let's go on. Kenneth Hagen. He started as an evangelist and prophet. Later, founded a church and Bible school. His great impact was through his book. He raised and blessed millions. Even after his death, he's still speaking powerfully to the world. Another person, Apostle Jose, Moses Orimolari. That man from the womb. He started his ministry from the womb of his mother till he died. Hmm. Ministry from the womb of his mother till he died. Preaching holiness to the core and oneness with Christ. Hmm. Introducing things of heavens to the earth. Changing people's life and bringing and sending them to the church they want to attend. Very powerful apostle. There's another man. The hands. The hands. The hands. This one started as a radio ministry. That later grew grew to a daily devotion. If you have ever read our daily bread, for the man that started it. Up to today, our daily bread is still functioning. Changing souls. Talking to people. Though the man died many, many years ago. I have many, many of them here. The Navigators. This is a ministry of Bible translation. Books and outreach to remote places. It has brought the gospel to many unrich places and their Bibles. They translate the Bible from different languages to different languages to different people. And they are still working till today. David Yojicho. This man used the, this man was used by God to build the largest church in the world. Raise many missionaries and spread the gospel of church growth around the world. He built orphanages, fed the poor, started daily newspaper that preached the gospel to his nation 
and has over 1 million saved souls in his church. He has now handed to his successor, though he's still alive, and the ministry is still growing stronger. William and Catherine Booth. William and Catherine Booth. The husband and wife, they are the husband and wife, and they started the Salvation Army Church. Have you ever come across that church? Salvation Army Church. Husband and wife. And the church is still waxing strong, stronger, doing great till today, all over the world. This amazing couple did a great work for the Lord. They are very, very amazing. And I can be mentioning names. I can be mentioning names. I can be telling you stories of these contemporary leaders that have done great things for the Lord. They did these things without scandals. And they finished strong and well in the law. Their ministry outlived them. And since speaking for God and eternity to today. Okay, let me ask you a question. We are saying all this as about this man and what will they say about you when the time comes? They started small. All of them started small. Look at John Wesley. I say as an itinerary preacher, somebody that will wake up in the morning that will preach to the market and come. And this John Wesley, the issue told us that he had a very serious marital crisis. That when he goes out to preach in the morning, he will be passing from house to house and he will go and stay in the market preaching and he will tell them if they have any questions, they will send a message to him. At that moment, what they used then was telegram. So before he got home, people might have been sending telegram to his mail. The wife was at home. He will be the one reading the telegram. And the one will be replying, don't mind him. He's a useless man. He cannot do what he's saying. The man will be, the woman will be replying the people before John Wesley came back home. And he did not because of that drive his wife away. He prayed, prayed till he was able to win the woman. And they all started Methodist Church. So, by passing Methodist Church, he started the Methodist Church with his wife, his brother Charles Wesley, and their mother. And look at Methodist Church today. They are anointing to be fruitful for the Lord. Fall on you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, these leaders that have built great ministry for God. What are the qualities they had? One, they had passion for the things of God. They were passionate about their call and work. Not about any other thing. Not about fame. Not about money. So, passion in their heart leads to action that made them great. They had potentials. They realized they had God-given potential. They develop it. They fulfill it through diligence, through determination, and through dedication. You need to have potentials. You need to work on them. Develop that potential. Fulfill it. Be determined. Be dedicated. We have so many wasted potentials in our churches nowadays. They are purposeful. They are focused. They are intentional. But deliberate in their work, they refuse to deviate from their purpose. Fine. They were positive in negative environments. Prayerful. They were very prayerful. They were men and women of prayer. They prayed alone. They sought for the prayers of others. They seek the Lord often. They got what they achieved on their knees. Ah. Hmm. They pr- 
prayed a lot. None of them went to Abali to consult. None of them practiced Christi Christo paganism. They faced Christ in an idolatry environment and they won. Purity. They are true saints, godly men and women who lived what they preached. They avoided scandals and remained true and genuine both in private and open life. Preparation. They are they prepare well for ministry. They continue to prepare for every stage of ministry work they took them to. Pursuit. They pursue their calling with uncommon vigor, with energy, with dedication. You see, let me tell you something. If you want to be great for the Lord, if you want to be great for the Lord, let me give you seven keys to be great for the Lord. Number one, let the Lord forever be number one in life. What do I mean? Lord Jesus Christ, let him be forever. Minister to Christ first and keep your relationship with him fresh. Number two, identify your God-given ministry and focus on it. Don't imitate anybody. Don't do follow-follow ministry. Identify the area you have been called into and focus on it. Are you called as an evangelist? Don't jump to be a pastor. Are you called to teach? Don't jump to be a musician. Identify your area of calling and focus on it. Number three, live a life of transparency and integrity. Your life is your ministry. Number four, Use your ministry to build people for God. Please, don't raise followers, but raise disciples for, the, for Christ. This is where we are making mistakes. We leaders, we are raising people that will, be, that will help us to be carrying Bible. That will be clearing road for us. Followers, they will kill you. Raise disciples of Christ. Who that will be doing it when you are not there. That will get to anywhere you can never get to. In the name of Christ. Number five. Don't ever entertain the motive of money in ministry. Don't look after money. Money will come. But don't rush for money. Number six. Refuse to deviate from your call. Refuse. No matter the pressure, don't deviate from your call. No matter the secular pressure, don't deviate from that call. Finally, number seven, provide resources for people. Write books, materials, publish materials and books, magazines, resources that will speak for you now and later. Let me give you one extra. Empower people. Help people to become mature. Help them to discover their gifts. And release them. Don't tie them down. Can I give you two more? To make it ten. Balance your home and your work. Don't because you are in the ministry. Fail to arrange your home. Take time to build your home for the Lord. Your own sources. Is your ministry success. Finally, raise a good successor. The greatness of your ministry is not measured by what you are doing during your lifetime, but what your successor do so that your ministry impact can outlive you. I am praying for you. God in his might, with his mighty hands, will lift you up in life and ministry. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Nothing will destroy your ministry and nothing will destroy your vision. The passion for the Lord, for the things of the Lord that have been given to you will never be destroyed by any athlete in the name of Jesus Christ. Christ will continue to be teaching you more, be teaching you more, be teaching you more in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you and God bless you. I'm still Dr. Fashe Singlebat. You have every right to call us for any question and we'll guide you. And if you want in our service, we render church consultancy service or ministry consultancy service. If you want us in any of those areas, just call the number. Get down to you. Talk of any ministry. It is the grace of God. Thank you and God bless you. Team, we meet next week Tuesday. God bless you.